Uh, please open your hymnals on number 732, number 732. We'll sing verse 1 and verse 3. <clears throat> Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Come all you who hear, now to his altar draw near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who will prosper your work and defend you. Surely the goodness and mercy shall daily attend you. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. As with his love he befriend you. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day. Jesus says, I call you my friends. And our opening hymn says, with his love and mercy, he continues to befriend you. And he wants you to become his best friends. But for that to happen, he must give you his Holy Spirit of friendship. And he gives us that gift as we're drawn into his presence. Remember, when I'm lifted up, I'm going to draw you. I'm going to draw you. Huh? It's called prevenient grace. The grace is coming to us and pulling us before we even see it. You're here, but think of who brought you here today celebrate your friendship with God. Well, let us ask for, sometimes friends can hurt one another. God never hurts us, but sometimes we fail because we're not perfect. But we want to be the best friends of Jesus, and he can make us that when we say we're sorry for our mistakes. Let us humble our hearts and contritely say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God <clears throat> and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, fellow children of Israel, be careful what you do, what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thedeus, appeared claiming to be someone important and about 400 men joined him.
but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the name, for the sake of his name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. <clears throat> One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, seek is to, to dwell, dwell in, in the house, house of the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One, One thing, thing I, I seek is to, to dwell, dwell in, in the, the house, house of the, of the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One, One thing, thing I, I seek is to dwell, dwell in the, in the house, house of the Lord. <clears throat> I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One, One thing, thing I seek is to dwell, dwell in the, the house, house of, of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. One does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee and a large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he knew himself what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon, Peter said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks and distributed to them, to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. 
when they had their fill. He said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, truly, this is a prophet, the one who has come into the world. Since Jesus knew they were going to come and carry him off and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. One thing I never liked in going to school and college and all that was tests. Tests just give me anxiety. You know? <laughs> I don't like tests. But I guess they're necessary because it's a measurement of how you're doing in any particular field of interest or study. And it's a good indicator. It's a good tool, is it not, huh? Sometimes uh, the test can cause anxiety and things and emotional distress and such. But Jesus gives tests of a of benevolent nature. He doesn't want to cause us stress. He, he wants us to get a, a, a window into where we are in his relationship to God regarding faith and trust. Faith and trust. Jesus always knows what he's going to do. And so there he crosses the Sea of Galilee, and there's thousands of people near him. And he creates a question. He says to his apostles, how are we going to feed all these people? They need some food. He's asking them. He knows what he's going to do. <laughs> he wants to see what their response is. And one says, 200 days wages? They don't get a little bit to eat. We've got to send them away. And then there's Andrew, huh? tender-hearted Andrew. There's a boy here that has some bread and has some fish. <laughs> it's five barley loaves, two, I mean, two, five loaves and two fish. Look at that. Good is that for so many. It was beautiful because Jesus was doing a lot of testing at that point. Would the little boy give his bread and his two fish? There's no doubt about it. The little boy said, I got some bread. I got some fish. <laughs> He's probably not thinking about this thousands of people, but he gave the little he had. So he was tested. He passed the test. He gave what little he had. His spirit was beautiful. He's probably more trusting than was the apostles. Jesus is delighted. He says, you pass the test, and thank you for your little gift. So then when he gets that test passed, he tells them, have everybody sit down. Have them recline. Have them get in a, in a position of quiet and thanksgiving. I want you to just sit down, be still. Get ready. And then he blesses, and then all of a sudden, the baskets get overflowing and overflowing and overflowing. They had more fish, and they had more bread. They had 12 wicker baskets full. Gather them up. Don't waste. This is God's gift to you. This is God's gift to you. See, Jesus feeds us all the time with sacred bread, becoming his, not just for our body, but his body, blood, soul, and divinity. We sit down. We posture ourselves. This is the sacred. We kneel, we prepare our hearts, and he takes a little bit of bread and he transforms it into himself. And then we gather the sacred food and we place it in a sacred place. That's divine. Divine is in you, the divine is here. We'll continue to consume the divine, the bread of life, because Jesus is always there. You know, replenish that food daily as he comes to be with us here. So what a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, lesson we can learn how Jesus allows us to experience testing, which is a good thing, to see how we're doing. We don't often pass it. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we do great. And he says, hallelujah, I'm going to bless you more. If we fail, we make mistakes. We say, I'm sorry. He says, let's start anew. Take the test over again. Eventually we'll learn and we'll do better. We'll get a good passing grade. Well, part of that passing grade is to be able to witness to the faith Jesus has instilled, incarnated, I mean, uh, uh, and kind of in, um, inculcated in our being, in our heart. And we see that 
being manifest in the life of the apostles, huh? Look at a day in the life of the apostles. Here we go again. You know, the Acts of the Apostles, the day in the life of the apostles. Boy, they're going through a lot right now. Uh, they received a lot. They failed a lot. They were re their faith was reconstructed a lot. And now they're called to witness through the power of the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that's speaking through them, as Luke and Matthew says, when they deliver you up before authorities, civil authorities, don't worry what you're about to say. I will be speaking through you. So here they are. We know they were in jail, they disappear, they're out there teaching, <laughs> speaking the word of God. Jesus is the salvation of the world. In his name you are healed. Okay. They are taken out of the temple, back before the, the Sanhedrin, who said, how would you get out of jail? Says, can't you tell? Maybe somebody got us out. Can't hear that. See, the Sanhedrin was a composite of of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They think most of the Sadducees and the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. And Pharisees believed in the resurrection. And who's the Pharisee that's there is Gamaliel. And Gamaliel is the one who taught Paul. He was a teacher. And Paul would say, I sat at the foot of Gamaliel, Gamaliel one of the great teachers, and he taught me. So he would believe, Paul believed in the resurrection. Remember when they delivered him up, they tried to persecute him. He said, I'm in persecuting because I believe in the resurrection. That started a whole battle between the Sanhedrin. Well, we do too. Well, we don't. You see, after they gave their witness, and this beautiful Gamaliel got up, said, whoa, 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 guys, think about what you're doing. We've had this happen before. And if it's of human origin, it will die out. If it's of God, you're going to be fighting God and you're going to lose. Let it alone. That wasn't good enough for the Sadducees. Stop preaching in that name. They don't like the name of Jesus because he speaks and he is resurrection. See? So they got him scourged. They, they got him whipped. I'm sure Gamaliel, Gamaliel said, what are you doing? Leave him alone. It wasn't good enough. Go out there and whip him. And don't preach in that name. Evil hates the name of Jesus. Hates the name of Jesus. Satan hates the name of Jesus. And so you see in this composite of the, of the, of the, of the, of the uh, Sanhedrin, you see the battle going on within them. So what you can see in society, they have titles and they have names. What you see there is here today. It just changed the time and places and changed the names. The Christians are those who believe in the resurrection, believe in the name of Jesus, who appeal to God in Jesus' name and bring light into the world. The Pharisees are kind of like the agnostics. Let's just see what happens. And the Sadducees are the atheists who say, there is no God and there is no resurrection. They're the ones that persecute the Christians because the, the darkness gets in them, okay? And that's what happens. And then they, they cultivate division. I mean, it's a sad thing because without the, I mean, Jesus said, be one or the other. Don't be the agnostic. Just choose. Okay. So anyways, we see the spiritual reality unfolding there existing today. Look at our governing body. See, the Sanhedrin is the governing body of, of, of Israel. We have a governing body in civil government. But you're going to see a composite of Christians and atheists and agnostics. And all of that presents a spirit. And that spirit influences, influences society. And you are the hope of the world. And the light in you is greater than the darkness of the world. So rejoice and be glad. Because Jesus said, any, any church that even pops up that is not of God will dissipate. If it's of human origin, okay, it will dissipate. But your church, which is founded on the foundation of of the apostles, Peter, the rock which Jesus established said, it will always endure, and the jaws of hell will not prevail against my church. Yeah, we'll get beat up a little bit. We're going to suffer because there's a battle going on. But the victory is in this church. And this church is a gift not only to Catholics, but all other denominations. Because of the true presence of Jesus here, which we offer every day, that brings blessing to them, and blessing to us and brings hope to the world. Please stand. Lord, we thank you again for teaching us and reminding us of the treasure of faith that we have. 
It's very tragic when, when, when Catholics don't believe a lot of the tenets. And it's very sad if we don't believe in the true presence. That is a, that's a horrible thing to do. So, Lord, we thank you because we do through your grace and mercy, and we're growing in the reality of this presence, which is our hope and our life and our happiness. So, Lord, now we ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you now to, to pour forth many, many graces to dispel the darkness and the confusion of this world. Your faith and uh, your, your faithfulness is, is, is enduring forever, and so is your mercy. So sanctify your church, your mystical body on earth, that we are very blessed to have the faith we have. We'll be a humble people, a people that profess that faith, no matter what the circumstances of our life may be, but to bring the light of Christ into the world, knowing that is the only hope of the world. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, we do continue to pray that your, your divine mercy, Lord, now will, will go in a special way to all the souls in purgatory. It is our joy to help. You, know, you love helping people, don't you? Well, we're helping them, and they're helping us. When they help us, they move our hearts to pray for them. That's how it works, that we all gather in heaven. Today, may Mother Mary go and bring many of her children home through the prayers we offer today. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we do continue to pray. We pray for all the sick in our parish family, all of those enduring any physical infirmity. It's tough sometimes, we know. May the peace of Christ sustain them in that. We also pray above all for spiritual infirmity, for those whose faith has grown lukewarm and are pondering it. May they be, have the gift to move beyond that into a, an enriching embrace of the divine truths of the faith and to live that faith wholeheartedly to bring great sanctification into their lives and blessings to the world. For this we pray to the Lord. We do pray for peace in this world. The, peace, the world is a very dangerous place. The Lord said the world cannot have peace unless it has recourse to my mercy. For in that mercy, the light of the divine goes out and heals, dispels darkness, unites people in love. For this reality to unfold in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our country especially as we move towards times of election and everything, that God in his mercy will give us holy and God-fearing men and women to lead us in our civil affairs. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, oh Lord, we do continue to pray for protection for our military and all those beautiful men and women who go into difficult circumstances, our civil servants. It's dangerous. Please, will you consecrate him to Mother Mary's most holy and immaculate heart. May the shield of her heart protect them and their families. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord and now, the Lord invites us to offer him any pretensions that have been placed within your hearts. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Oh, Father, our, our joy is to be in relationship with you and feel that joy in, the, in our hearts, no matter what the circumstances of life may be, because you are with us, and you are all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present, and in the shelter of your love, we live in security and hope. May we always feel the peace of your presence, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with this sacrifice, which we offer to you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my inequities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of us. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore now overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. A blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it. Gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jacques, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Yes, Jesus says, I go with you and profess my Father's love for you. Go to the world and say these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all of our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teachings. Never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep us safe unto eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep us safe unto eternal life. And the body of Christ. And the body of Christ and the body of Christ, 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 and the body of Christ. And the body of Christ. 
and the body of Christ. And the body of Christ. And the body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Someone will be asking you to be there for a while. Can you hear my cry from deep within? All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Forever has love in you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of our Lord, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. In and through the most holy and immaculate heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to the prayers of St. Joseph, all holy women and all holy men. May Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass has ended, new life has begun, as we go forth seeking to serve the Lord and one another. So like I say, I don't like tests, but today you're probably all going to have a little test. A test to be forgiving and understanding, to have a listening ear, to extend an act of mercy. Maybe it's just to help somebody do their chores, huh? Let's be open to these invitations. Let's pass the test and make Jesus smile. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. 
Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Uh -huh.